Thank you, Jason, for that very short but sweet introduction and very brief. And thank you for not telling that I'm just two years older than you are. <laughs> okay. And, and actually, it's so nice to be here again. Actually, if I remember it right, uh, this is my first time to speak in BFF. And, but uh, BFF is not new to me because for ever since its inception, I was telling Diane kanina na um, your leaders like sila Jason, sila Raymond, and the, the early ones who started it, but um, um, I was there in that meeting in this area along with uh, Auntie Desu um, that they wanted to start a Bible study group here in Pinondo. I said, okay, maybe I can help because um, I can help set up and all, but I can't commit because uh, I have a ministry in Makati. At the same time, I'm not from Pinondo, so it would be like almost two hours travel from Makati to here. But by God's grace, uh, He was able to set up leaders, your leaders right now, and praise God for, for this growing ministry. And of course, may praise and worship na. So I'm so happy to be here again. And the last time I was in this venue was about a few months ago. I spoke to a joint Bible study group. Um, I think some of you were, were able to attend. Ma. Yes. Uh -oh. and, and now I'm, I'm back again. So thank you for your time. Um, my wife um, wanted to be here, but she was stuck in Makati. She had um, she had a whole day of meeting, but she, normally when when I speak, gusto niya mag-attend and she wants to support. But right now, um, you know, she, she she isn't able to come. But she extends her her hello, um, her hellos to everyone. Okay, so bakit nga ba ito yung topic ko? Di ko rin alam, <laughs> but basically. Uh, it was one of my quiet time and God impressed upon me na, okay, to share about this. I know this is not the first time that everyone has uh, heard uh, that you hear about the message, but by God's grace, um, you will plant something in all, our, all of our hearts tonight. So before I, before I um, start my message, Guru, I'd like to show uh, a short video lang. So if it's possible to, to dim the lights. Basically, it's a short clip. It's a what they what you call a time lapse. So, parang it's a video that is fixed permanently. Just parang you just nandyan lang siya magtabag from the time the first the first picture was about sunset. So hanggang nagset yung sun, the 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 stars appeared, and then after that, na walan naman yung mga stars, and then the sun rose again. So for 15 hours, it was this this video was taken. I got it in YouTube. Basically, what's the point? Uh, to see the wonders of God's creation. Kasi parang, minsan, di ba, ako, we, when we go to the beach, we look at stars and observe falling stars. We're able to count how many falling stars na naman doon nakita yung ganyan. Pero madami, di ba? Madami siya. And, and it's really, when you see the creation of God, uh, especially, if I remember the, 
the first time he created um, the world with light and darkness. So how beautiful it must have been. And even right now, many, many years after, kita pa rin natin eh. Let's just, every time we wake up in the morning and we'll see the sun slowly appearing in the horizon, it's a beautiful scene. And pangubaga, it makes me always in awe when I see that, wow, the beauty of, of the creation of the Lord. Okay. So, uh, it is... So, it is in that... It is in that beauty na parang... Uh, yeah, great. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned, the yung, yung time lapse it allows us to uh, allows us to marvel at God's creation, na how beautiful His creation is. At the same time, na from darkness to light, na parang every time there's light, our eyes are drawn to it. Iba every time na parang in a dark room, tapos pag may biglang mag, mag light ng candle, our eyes are immediately drawn to it. And that is the inspiration of our of our main verse tonight, which is. Um, Na what was texted to everyone and then sa Facebook and uh, then it's in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 16 so if you'll indulge me we can all uh, read together okay number one two three you are the light of the world a city on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl instead they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Okay. Can we say a short prayer? Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for the blessing of allowing us to be here on a Friday night. Lord, I pray, Father, that you will just um, use each and every one of us here tonight, Lord, to be able to, um, to receive your message, Lord, with an open heart and an open mind. I pray, Father, that you will just touch each of our hearts tonight, Lord, that um, we will be moved, Lord, by what you will um, impart to us here tonight. We pray, Father, that for those that are still on their way here, that you just allow them to come here safely. We just lift up this time into your hands, Lord, and may your light really shine upon each and every one of us, Lord, and may, may we not go home empty-handed, Lord. We lift up this time in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, what does it mean to be the light of the world? Um, the verse tells us that um, based on the Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8, all Christians are light in the Lord. Meaning, we were once in darkness, but now we are the light in the we are you, you are now the light of the Lord. Therefore, live as children of the light. So, dalawa premise yon. Number one, lahat tayo. Before, kasi we were darkness, we were in our sinful state. But ever since Christ came into our lives, He has transformed us and He has made us to be beacons of light. But it doesn't stop there. Hindi lang, hindi lang porket light ka na, but you must shine. You must shine as lights. Okay. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15 says that you will be the pure and innocent children of God. You live among people who are crooked and evil. But you must not do anything that they can say is wrong. Try to shine as lights among people of this world. So it's not enough that we are we are a light, but we must shine. We must shine as lights. But the question is, how do we shine as lights? When I was preparing this message, lagi kong na na. LSS in sa song. I don't know if it was Rihanna, but shine bright like a diamond. So, so parang, minsan kahit natutulog ako, napapakinggan ko pa rin siya, LSS, sabi ko, what does it have to do with my message? For it but light, be a light of the, of the world, then parang, shine bright like a diamond. Medyo, hindi ako singer. <laughs> okay, so, the, main, the message tonight is, Jesus our light, giver of light. Okay, so, Sinabi natin na, di ba, we are to be the light of the world. Actually, salt and light. When I texted Jason the, the, the verse, I accidentally included the first one. So, so you know, accidentally, but the message is really about being the light. But I was, 
let me tell you also about salt, which I explain ko later. But basically, the, the main topic would be about uh, Jesus, which is our light and giver of life. Pero sabi natin kanina, di ba? Lahat ng Christians, light na tayo. But we need to to shine and make that light shine. But we cannot give what we do not have. So we know that Jesus is our source. Jesus is the true light source. It says in John chapter 8, verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, He said, I am the light of the, lo the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So in essence, when we accept the Jesus, tayo yung naging light. But, Jesus is our source of light. Therefore, we borrow and derive our light from Jesus. Since He is the true source, kung wala si Jesus, we cannot give off that light. Eh. Kasi in the first place, the light that we had was because when we had Jesus in our lives. So, yun yung kumbaga, kung, kung bumilya ka, si Jesus yung electricity to, for us to be able to, to give off that light. And it is not about plugging that I'm into lights, LED lights, kaya... Yeah, I was sharing this. Na isip ko lang yun kasi when when si Adrian, Aldrich, Aldrich and, and I and Mark were talking earlier. It's parang right now na ko niko. Oh nga, no? But so much for that. <laughs> so Jesus being the true light source. Okay. So as lights of the world, we are to illuminate and give light to others. So dalawa yan. Number one, we shall be set up as lights. Remember, when we had Christ in our lives, light, light na tayo. But, do you know that na set up pa na tayo? Christ was the one who set us up to be the light. So that we can be a, make their light shine. And when you group together people who shine for Jesus, you illuminate and you create a very big light. It's like, yung sa, kanina sa verse natin, it's like a city on a hill that no matter how you try to hide it, it can't be hidden because of the greatness of that light. So, by their good preaching, the early disciples was very bold in proclaiming the gospel. And they were persecuted. Minsan, ano, di ba, parang kinaaway sila. Some, most of them were martyred to death. But because of their sacrifices, people came and became believers parame na parame because they know that this is the real thing. So because of their good preaching, so if you have the gift, how can we relate to that? If you have the gift, like the gift of singing, the gift of entertaining, the gift of organizing, maybe the gift of talking, so you have many speakers, future speakers that you can draw from. So don't hide it. Don't hide it under the the bushel or hide it under the table. Because for us to be able to shine, use it either for good preaching and our good living. What does it entail to have a good living? Hindi siya yung tipo naka BMW ka. Siya tipo parang si Mark medyo may naghahati na din sundo. So, it's good, di ba? It's good that you have the simple, joyous life. But, what do we mean by good living? It should be burning and shining lights evidenced by how you live, how you talk, how you interacted with others. These testimonies will be used to instruct, direct, encourage, and comfort others. In other words, yung buhay mo should be able to speak about what you believe in should be able to speak about what you stand for. Later, we'll have specific examples. And we have one of the greatest examples of letting our light shine just by looking at the example of Jesus. So Jesus was fully human and fully God. He was a perfect being but he came to this world um, just like you and me. So, naging tao siya, naging simple na tao siya. And yet, we can learn a lot. So, so, sobrang dami na 
Ma'am, what we can learn from Jesus? I just outlined three. I just selected three three things that we can learn from Jesus and how to make our light shine brighter. Okay. And why Jesus? Bakit si Jesus? Sabi niya, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. His life contrasted sharply with the lives of the Pharisees and the other people during his time. You see, what he said and how he acted is completely different from the what other people says and thinks. So you can see na parang nakaiba si Jesus and his light shone brightly because his people could easily see the difference between him and say a Pharisee or, 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 or Sadducees. Diba, parang every time Jesus goes to a place, there's always commotion. People always, parang, ano ba to? It's either people idolize him, people say na, wow, this is a great teacher, a great prophet. Or people insult him, people malign him, people try to trick him, and people try to, to parang, parang, itatrap siya. Diba? People, the, the Pharisees love to do that, to trap him, and to put him in a situation na mapapahiya siya. But always, Jesus knows the hearts of these people and alam niya how to respond. So, therefore, he's able to make the light shine. So, I have three examples. The first example was about Jesus was radical. He was going against the light. What do I mean by going against the light? Let's look at the story of the adulterous woman. It's in John chapter 8, verse 3 to 11. Can you all read it? And one, two, three. The teachers of the law, the Pharisees, brought in a woman caught in the door. They made her stand before the group and they said, Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So, just a brief background. Lang. Um, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, they brought in a woman whom they claimed committed an adultery. And, and, Sinabi nila, Jesus, sabi ng law ng Moses, we have to stone this woman. So what do you say about it? In the past kasi, yung sa Old, Old Testament, the law of Moses, when you see someone, uh, has, uh, uh, a married person with an unmarried person committing adultery on the act, both of them should be stoned to death. But in this case, the Pharisees tried to trick Jesus para Nahuli nila, pero yung babae na yung dinala nila. Tapos papapatay nila yung babae. But under the law, dapat hindi, dapat sabay. So, if Jesus were to respond, don't, don't, don't kill the woman. So, sasabihin nila, oh, dinasobey mo yung law ni Moses. Eh, ito, mga keepers of the word to eh, yung mga Pharisees. Sasabihin niya, legalistic sila. Sasabihin niya, no, dinasobey mo yung, yung commandments ni Moses. So, you're claiming to be someone, a prophet and a lord, and yet you disobey. So, di pwede. Second, if Jesus were to say, Sige, patayin niya yan yung babae. So, they're violating the law. And secondly, as a Jew, Jesus was a Jew, you're not allowed to carry out the death sentence. You're not allowed to say, Oops, sige, patayin niya yan. Only the Romans are allowed to carry out the death sentence. So, double wame si Jesus. So, it's a trap na ginamit nila kay Jesus. But Jesus, always going against the tide, he was radical. Sinabi lang niya, nagsusulat siya doon. Sabi niya, okay. <laughs> he might be writing the sins of those people. So we don't know it, eh, but uh, scripture tells us that he was scribbling something on the floor. So malaman, nagsusulat na siya of letters in the sand. Let anyone of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And what happened next was, at this, those who heard began to go away at one, one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left. Bakit the older ones first? <laughs> Kasi yung, yung mga, uh, 
<laughs> yung mga older ones, kaya ni Uncle Mark, uh, <laughs> sila yung parang, oops, na-realize sila madami na akong na-accumulate na mga sins in, the, in life. I'm not saying si Mark marami, ha? Masabi ko na. <laughs> parang magising si Mark. Uh, so parang, the more you, with wisdom, di ba, with age, parang you realize, parang ang dami mo na palang nagawa then you are more repentant. So sila, they realize that, okay, slowly yung mga elderly, and then finally yung mga, yung mga young ones um, uh, also left. Kasi na-convict sila. And Jesus was telling, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Sabi ng woman, No, sir. Um, sabi ni Jesus, Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now, go and, and leave your life give your life of sin. So, amazing, di ba? Um, what, what, what this one is telling us that there's no condemnation and that there's no judgment. Pero, kasi, ako, before, very judgmental ako na tao. Parang, parang, di ba, it's easy to judge people by the way they look, by the way, by the clothes they wear, or the clothes that, or parang, the, their language, their skin color. So parang may prejudices na kaagad tayo eh. Di ba? Parang if you just stand in the corner in the mall and observe people, marami kang ma-observe ma talaga. So, so and, and there are prejudices. But si Jesus, always going against the tide, um, He reserved judgment eh. He reserved judgment and always, there's always a benefit of the doubt. So ganito eh. Ganun yung ginawa ni Jesus, di ba? And, um, uh, from 1 Samuel, the Lord doesn't look at the things people look at. Yan, exactly yung kanina, parang pag tayo, parang, okay, para sa akin, pag nakita kong maganda yung relo niya, mayaman siya. So, ganun tayo, di ba? Pero maganda yung sapatos niya. Pero, hindi naman bagay sa mukha. Malamang fake yan. <laughs> So, marami mga mga prejudices, but it says here that the Lord doesn't look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And this is the same principle when He selected David. He has chosen David and anointed David to be king. Kasi when uh, sinabi ni, ni, ni God na piliin mo yung king, parang the prophet was saying, oh, ito na ba? Kasi handsome to. Hindi. So, first brother, second brother, third brother, hanggang sa fourth brother, hanggang sa sixth brother. Hindi pa rin. Wala na. Meron pa. May isa doon na titen ng sheep. Nung dumating, siya pa ba talaga? But the Lord says, no, um, I look at the heart and I anoint David as the king. So, I pray na tayo ganun din. Uh, before, before, before we judge, before we think ill about other people, let's ask God, Lord, make me like you that I look at the heart and not look at um, the physical, physical appearance. Because if we are to judge, sabi sa James, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or a sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment of it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge the neighbor? Only God is the lawgiver. He gives us the law. And He is the one who will judge us. But tayo, we just abide by the law and follow it. Minsan tayo, gusto kasi natin, parang okay, gusto ko rin maging judge hindi tayo pwede maging judge. We just obey the laws. And putting it into action, how about us? This is where the rubber meets the road. At home or at the workplace, are we quick to judge and slander the people we interact with? Sabi ka na, we are to make our light shine before men. So if we slander other people, or di lang slander, but encourage people to gossip. Kasi minsan, especially sa office, juicy yan eh, pag may gossip na parang may magkukwento. Tapos, ikaw, hindi ka mag-ano, hindi ka 
Kumbaga, um, di ka mag-participate, but when you hear it, and parang, di, di ka mag-participate, but pero minsan parang ikakwento mo sa iba. So it's basically sharing and slandering people na you don't even know. If you have something against one person, better to go to that person and clarify rather than telling other people about it na hindi naman makakatulong. So it's best, if you want to really make our light shine, to withhold judgment and be compassionate and forgiving. And ganun si Jesus, di ba? He never judged, he never judged the adulterous woman. So sabi lang ni Jesus, they left already, so there's no condemnation. Neither will I judge you, but change your ways. Go and depart from your life of sin. So it's Jesus modeling how we can be compassionate and forgiving when people wrong us. The second example, the first was the um, going against the flow or going against the tide. The second is outrageous, unconditional love. Outrageous. Why outrageous? We know the story, right? Peter denies Jesus three times. Not once, not twice, but three times. Okay. So, aren't you the one that of that man's followers? No, I am not, Peter answered. And while Peter was standing there warming himself, someone asked him, Aren't you one of Jesus' followers? No, I am not. One of the high priest servants was there. He was a relative of the servant whose ear Peter had cut off. And he asked, Didn't I see you in the garden with that man? Once more, Peter denied it, and then the rooster crowed. Exactly uh, how Jesus told Peter na, you would deny me three times before the rooster But son of John, do you love me more than this? He said, yes, Lord, I know what, that I love you. Feed my lambs. And Jesus again asked him, do you love me? Yes, Lord, know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. And the third time, Simon was asked again, Do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Be much. So, ako, when I was uh, ano, reviewing this and, and saw the unconditional love, kasi it, it makes it real when people um, nakasakit sa atin, or when people wrong us. Kasi ito, parang sometimes we're just reading, di ba? But, to experience it na parang a business partner betrays you, a best friend betrays you, a business partner steals money from you, so how would you react? And ito, three times siya pinitray, tapos three times din niya pinatawad, and three times Jesus said, okay, do you love me? Then, I give you this charge, feed my lamb, take care of my people, feed my sheep. So, for me, parang Jesus was a perfect example of a man who gave outrageous um, unconditional love. A love na sometimes parang crazy. Parang, eh, ito si Peter pala to. Eh, paano si Judas? Diba? Si Judas, Jesus already knew that Judas would, would betray him. And yet, he accepted him. In fact, if Judas would have repented, just like how Peter repented, then Jesus would have forgiven him all um, without questions asked him. But Judas never had that opportunity. He had that opportunity to repent, but he never accepted that opportunity. So that's the difference between um, Judas and Peter. But for Jesus to give that unconditional love, it's sometimes parang mahirap explain Kasi di ba parang as, as Christians, how can we be salt and light? Eh, inaapi ka na ng kaibigan mo eh, and yet you don't retaliate. So, putting it into action, think of someone who have betrayed or hurt you now or in the past. How did you react? Is it uh, manligigaw? Is it uh, some what you, you are in business with? Is it a family? 
Is it a relative? Sometimes mas masakit pa eh, family member. And can you find it in your heart to forgive the person and accept him or her back in your love as Jesus did with Peter? Outrageous and conditional love. You want to make your light shine? Show outrageous and conditional love to the people around you. And finally, dare to be bold. Dare to be bold. In sense, si Jesus radical siya eh. In a way, kasi parang he calls Levi and Matthew to follow him. Aside from that, he had dinner at Levi's house, the tax collector who he met earlier, who he asked na, you follow me? Si Levi, as is a tax collector. So, ang equivalent niya dito sa present day natin, <laughs> taga Bureau of Internal Revenue. Tax collector. So, BIR yan. E di ba pag BIR, marami tayong mga labels, marami tayong mga names. Si Lacos. Si, 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 uh, we call them a lot of names. So, even in the Roman times, Yung mga tax collectors are notorious already. They have this reputation na parang notorious. Kasi sila, they are Jews. But the Jews consider them outcasts. Kasi parang Jew ka na nga, dapat tinutulungan mo kami. And you're employed by the Roman government to collect taxes from us. And collect crazy taxes in a way na parang extortion na yung babalabas. So, hindi siya, yung mga tax collectors nung time ni Jesus, hindi na sila sikat. Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin sila sikat. Kaawin siya ng mga tao. So, imagine Jesus having dinner in the house of Kim Hinares. Kain-kain sila. Tapos may mga, mga sa church, chuchu. Tax collectors and sinners. And on hearing this, siyempre si Jesus, hindi na papalampasin yan. Isn't that him? It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Very bold answer. Tama nga naman. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. You don't go to the hospital because, wala lang, you just feel like going there, chill, get coffee, no? When you want to go to the hospital, it's either you visit someone who's sick or you are sick yourself. So, Jesus, again, was very radical. So, I can imagine lang kung si Jesus kung nandito pa siya ngayon, he would not hang out with the rich and the famous, but he will hang out with the rock stars, the drug addicts, nandun siya sa mga tambay-tambay na uh, yung minsan makikita mo nang inuman pagkatapos magsasaksakan. Because he came not to be with the ano eh, yung mga okay-okay na tao. He, he came to for the loss and he came to save the sinners. And one of such example is yung kay, kay Matthew, which is Levi. Levi. And another example was Zacchaeus. Naalala niya si Zacchaeus? Diba? Yung small guy who went up the sycamore tree. Ganun din. He was also a tax collector and he was also not um, famous. But Jesus made a radical bold move. And Zacchaeus, you come down. I'm going to your house today. I'm gonna dine with you. And through that, compassion and daring to be bold, Zacchaeus was saved. Zacchaeus was transformed. And Zacchaeus said, Lord, if I owe someone anything today, I will give back four times. If I owe them one million, I'll pay them four million. Because Zacchaeus saw the light, eh? he, he saw the source of light, and with the source of light, he himself was illuminated, and he himself was transformed. Sabi nun sa verse kanina, uh, which verse was that? Yung sa... Uh, 
Ephesians 5.8 For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, and live as children of the light. Zacchaeus was once darkness, but when he experienced the source of the light, which was Jesus himself, nagbago ang buhay niya eh. And now, it, he has the opportunity to shine, make his light shine. So, he did actually. He repaid the big people their debts. So, tayo din. So, putting it into action. Do we actually, do we intentionally uh, watch out for opportunities to influence and reach out to others? Or we just remain in our comfort zone? Jesus intentionally called in the tax collectors. Jesus intentionally uh, reached out to the people, to the lost. Kasi minsan tayo, pag we are believers, hindi, dito gusto ko, kasama ko lahat, mga group ko, Christians, tayo-tayo lang dapat, tayo-tayo lang. But what about those that are lost? Remember, it's the sick uh, that needs a doctor and not those that are well. And can your family or friends tell that your life is an example of good preaching and good living? Huwag na tayong lumayo. How about our main circle of influence, which is our family? Does our family members see our good preaching and good living? Does it promote Jesus when they see us? Or they say, hmm, is it nga ba talaga? Di ba every Friday nag-BBLF ka? So, nangyari. May nagbago ba? So, learning these three examples of Jesus really, kumbaga, gives us a preview of how to make our light shine. Kasi alam mo naman natin eh, you are the light of the world. Then, if you have the light, if you, di mo kailangan itago yan, you have to, ano. But how do we make our light shine? And these three examples from Jesus should be a start, especially in relating to our family members, our colleagues, that we have the bright light of Jesus inside of us. And that is by following his example of going against the tide, withholding judgment, withholding prejudice, giving outrageous unconditional love, forgiving, daring to be bold by reaching out to the lost. Because we have the, the 30 minutes of our time here, uh, I pray that um, the Lord has planted a seed in our hearts and reminded us and that the Lord has imparted a strong message to, to each and every one of us here to not just listen but do what it says. You say, it's easy to listen, eh? okay, we, we know, okay, ah, I know about it. But to actually practice and do it, that's the harder thing. But small steps, because all of us are a work in progress. Man. I don't claim to be an expert in this because I'm a sinner myself. So I also struggle with you know, being judgmental. Uh, I also struggle with you know, sometimes unconditional love. And my wife can attest to that. Na parang, parang, uh, when, whenever I say wife, ko, parang, I tend to serve her in a way na parang pagpagod na siya tapos parang naiwan yung mga phone charges sa baba. It's okay, I'll get it. Tapos minsan walang water sa room. It's okay, I'll, I'll get the water. Tapos parang feeling niya, wow, oh, I'm so blessed. Uh, baby baby ako and all. But sometimes, I also make it a point na uh, can you be the one to take your chargers? Kasi bakit naiiwan siya lang eh? So she also, she also learns. But it doesn't mean naman na I don't give her unconditional love. Kasi the fact that I tell her it's an unconditional love na uh, it's a reminder lang na, na maybe you should plan your schedules. I, I, I gently remind her 
So like ngayon, always kapag nagtutok ako, nandito siya. But this, I think this is the first time na she's not able to come. But uh, I told her, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, uh, I completely understand. Kasi you've been very supportive naman. So I know this time, it's an exception. But pray for me. And in fact, she's very supportive na some of the... Kasi ako, when I prepare for a message, ang dami kong sinusulat-sulat. Ang dami kong minsan, nang research ako, I get from the Bible, I get from the net. And then, gulo-gulo na message. She was the one who organized it to make it, ano, uh, to make it simpler. So, uh, I hope you find it simple uh, because uh, it's my wife who actually simplified it. So, I praise God for, for my wife. Daphne. So, yo, this this is my second to the last slide. And finally, uh, we said, diba, na, uh, those are the three examples lang of how to make your light shine. But we are told na let our light shine before men so that they may see the good works and praise your Father in heaven. Because ultimately, why do we need to make our light shine? What for? It is for the glory of God. Kasi if you make your light shine just so that, okay, okay pala, make the light shine. Si Diana, make the light shine. For, for whose glory? For her glory? For her family's glory? Ultimately, no. Because Jesus is the source of our light. Then if we are to shine for Him, we glorify Him. And also for the other people who see that we, we make our life shine for Jesus, they should in turn be able to glorify Jesus and not glorify you. So yun yung end goal uh, as believers. Lahat naman tayo eh. We are here because we want to glorify God and we, make, we want to make our lives count so that when people see us, see our good works, they end up praising our Father in Heaven. So, I have... Good to all men. May the greatest good being their salvation, our light shines. When we risk looking to pull for Christ, where others dare not, our light shines. When we would rather see men saved than to make a profit from them, our light shines. When we use our money to build people, rather than our people to build money, our life shines. When we keep our word despite of the fact that it costs us duty to do so, our life shines. When we give caring employees another chance when the world wouldn't, our life shines. When we tell others the most important thing in our lives is Jesus Christ and not success. That they, so they can see that it's true. Our when we, when we respond in kindness to our enemies, our light shines. 